Hey everyone, it's Heather from Heather Marie Speaks and I'm here on location in Richmond, Virginia at Mama J's with one of the owners, Lester Johnson. We're gonna talk a little bit about the restaurant industry, how things have been going amidst the pandemic, it's changed anything in business and also what he's doing to help shine a light in the community. So thank you so much, Lester, for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Heather. Yeah, so Mama J's is um, a pretty established restaurant. How long have you guys been here? Been, we were 11 years in October, so we opened in 2009. That's so. amazing. Yeah. Did you guys have any issues during the pandemic where you had to close down and um, readjust the normal routine? No, we were, um, we already had a to-go business and we were already doing online ordering for about three or four years. So we were able to just kind of transition into doing that more. Okay. Um, it, um, we basically kind of had everything set in place. So again, we still struggled uh, initially when I think that, it, you know, everything just was a shock for people. So uh, that first week out in March when everything shut down, you know, numbers just dropped off significantly but they they built back up over you know a period of, of a few weeks so sure um, but again it's still been tough you know, yeah it's, just, it's not the same so. i know it's been difficult for everybody in this um especially the new orders that are coming out and everything else but i love that you guys uh have had a family business here for a while and mama jay's is your mom who is yep. your other um, business partner tell yep. me a little bit about yep. how you guys decided to open the restaurant yeah so my mom is uh one of a large family she's got uh She's one of uh, 13 kids, and um, she, you know, her, my aunts, my uncles, all of them know how to cook. You know, chores was like a daily thing for a family that big. Yeah. So um, when she was working for the sheriff's department, she was doing catering, uh, ma mainly word of mouth, you know, people that she knew. And she just decided she no longer wanted to do that, and she wanted to kind of try to cater and things. So that was back in 1999. Wow. So she left the sheriff's department. Um, did catering for a while and then in 2009 decided to we decided to open a restaurant uh, it was amazing. actually really not the intent to open a restaurant we were really just looking for a kitchen to run the catering out of okay. and when we found the space the, the thought process was that we were going to be able to use it to run the catering and just kind of do the restaurant on the side and it just didn't work out that way. It we have a special flipped. guest who's yeah. joined us as well. Tell us about yes. this little Mama J. So this is this is my mini me. And as you can see, we're dressed alike. Um, <laughs> but this is my, my little daughter, Lena. Uh, Lena. Right now, her, her name is Migo from Smallfoot. Okay. Um, but see, this is because um, I'm kind of doing daddy duty. Her you know, mom is working yeah. um, during the day. She goes everywhere with me. So, That's amazing. Um, so yeah. tell me what you guys have been able to do to kind of uh, shine a light in the community during this time. Uh, we've basically just been trying to, you know, help out as much as we can. We've, um, you know, in addition to trying to survive, we've, I've, you know, I talked to a lot of restaurant owners and, and businesses uh, just trying to give my advice. I try to disseminate as much information as I can with regard to grants and, and loans. Yeah. Um, I'm actually on, on a few boards, one being the uh, Board of Office and Minority Business Development, uh, Richmond Region Tourism. Um, I was also on the, the board, um, the task force that the governor put together for the reopening of the state of Virginia. Okay. So through, you know, being connected to a lot of different people and a lot of different things, um, I come across information and like I say, I just try to disseminate that information as much as possible. Yeah. Um, as far as like, you know, our customers, you know, mainly just trying to remind people to stay safe. Um, that's one of the reasons why we didn't just, we decided not to open um, for dining because I didn't want to put um, my staff or my customers at risk. So, yeah. you know, um, it's just been tough. It's been 2020 is like a year or no other. Uh, so it's really just been a stick and move type situation. So you try yeah. to adjust as best you can. We're definitely all in this together. It's um, It's been a trying time. I know people have struggled with their mental health through this, but it's great that you're able to shine a light and help encourage others that might be in the same industry as you of what's worked and how they can continue to thrive and go forward mm -hmm. through it. It's definitely encouraging and helping to shine yeah. a light. So right now and from the time the pandemic started, you guys have just been doing takeout, correct? Yep, yep. So people can call in and order ahead of time? Yep, yep, we have online ordering, they can call in. Initially when everything happened, we weren't allowing people to put order, take place orders inside the restaurant. Sure. You either had to call in or, or, or do takeout. And that basically the thought process was the limited person-to-person um, -person contact. Um, as things kind of went on and we learned a little bit more about the virus, we kind of made the adjustment to let people come in and, and do orders. But again, like I said, and it, it's, it's working really smoothly, especially when you do an online order. We send you a text message once your order is complete that so you can come in and pick it up so you don't have to 
sit around and stand around, you know. So it's just, again, like I say, just trying to figure out how to adjust and, and survive in a, a pandemic yeah. type situation. So, and, there, and there's no playbook for this, Heather. There's there no isn't. playbook at all. So. I know. What kind of encouragement would you give someone out there that might be discouraged because of what's going on, that might be a restaurant owner or any kind of business owner? What would be the, um, the drive that's kept you guys going? Well, you know, for me, it's just been trying to make sure that the big motivator for me was my staff, just mm -hmm. trying to make sure that they, you know, didn't get into a situation with, you know, the unemployment and things yeah. of that nature. So um, we did receive, you know, PPP and, and EIDL. And so, again, those things were godsends for us. Um, but, again, just trying to make sure that as far as the ship that I'm in charge of stays yeah. afloat. Uh, Being a good leader. As, yeah, you That's know, great. as far as other restaurants and stuff, the encouragement right now, especially now, as opposed to six months ago, is that there's light at the end of the tunnel. You know, we have these vaccines yeah. that are coming online. Um, they seem to be, you know, the efficacy seems to be where it needs to be. So, again, it's just making really, figuring out how to make the next six months is probably going to be critical for most businesses. Yeah. So. And you guys have won some awards for your food here. Mm -hmm. um, tell everybody what kind of food you offer so they can um, call in and make an order themselves. Yeah, we, uh, we sell soul food, um, fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, uh, pork chops, catfish, all of those southern staples yeah. that, you know, soul people, food. In, soul food, people in Virginia, uh, North Carolina, Georgia, all those, you know, they, they, they people know the type of food we're serving. And like I said, we just try to do it uh, at a very high level, um, mm -hmm. you know, quality ingredients. Um, one of the big things that um, we focus on is our service, and we actually were nominated for a James Beard Award That's um, great. for service. So, um, but yeah, like I say, you know, fresh homemade cakes and pies and cobblers. But again, that's always been what's kind of gotten us to the point where we are, is making sure that we're doing the the, the things that we need to do at a high level, and yeah. making sure people feel comfortable parting with their money yeah. for the service and the product that we offer. So. Well, and acts of service is definitely a love language that you're doing to love others and to care for others in the community by giving them food. It's definitely um, a gift to be able to give back to those. So if you guys want to try Mama J's, they are here, award-winning um, catering and service. So how can they contact you? Um, you can go to the website, uh, mamajayskitchen.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I think that one's Mama J's RVA. I'm not a big social media guy. Uh, my GM and my assistant managers do that. Uh, we're located at 415 North First Street in Jackson Ward. And the phone number is 804-225-7449. Uh, so. That's great. Well, guys, support Mama J's. And um, you guys keep shining a light. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. Thank you, Miss Lena, Thanks, for joining so thank us you. today. And thank you so much, Lester. Thank you. Until next time, guys, for our next Community Spotlight, stay tuned and have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.